Well, the transition is well underway as we transition from life on a farm, 25 acres, to life in an RV. A couple, maybe 100, 150 square feet. It's tight. Well, the search for an RV was a little tricky because we don't know much about RVs, or we didn't know much about RVs. And when we began to research, we realized there are some big, beautiful monsters out there <laughs> that, uh, that don't sleep many people. Uh, for us, the RV is a place to sleep and to prepare meals. And that's about it. We didn't need a big living room area. We didn't need a huge entertainment center and, and all that stuff. We needed comfortable beds which actually led us to a smaller RV. Uh, it's, it's a bunkhouse type RV. Uh, it has an adequate kitchen and it has an outdoor kitchen, which is kind of key for us because in the summer it's gonna be hot, so we wanna cook outside. So um, it was quite amazing that uh, there are some, some really big RVs out there that really are <laughs> not, <anybody. laughs> yeah, they're not designed to sleep anybody. I guess they're beautiful, but uh, I like backpacking myself. So anyway, let's take a look. Well, we're getting a little bit closer here. We have actually purchased our first RV. So we're gonna have to step inside and take a look inside. Uh-oh, there's Hi. a beautiful woman inside. Man, this thing came with a beautiful woman. That's yeah. kind of cool. And well, don't forget the puppy dog. And a free dog. <laughs> Man, I got what I paid for, didn't I? I got more than I paid for. And there's Nathan. He said, I bet, I'm guessing there's, yes, there's somebody there on the master bed. And then, there, oh, the little baby. Say hi, little baby. Hi. And then let's see what we got here back in the boys' room. There we go. Uh, there's a boy. This came with a lot of extras. And a girl. <laughs> Holy cow. We got a girl, a boy, a dog, a beautiful woman, a baby. Two kids. Where's that other kid? Uh, I think he's hiding in the master. No, that that girl. Uh, honey, she's a soccer. She's a soccer. So we got a bathroom here, the privy, if you will. We got a refrigerator. We got a stove, and a microwave, and a sink, and a TV. Which is funny because we don't have a TV in the house, but now we have a TV in the camper. So I don't know. Um, what we're do. I don't know. We, I don't know. <laughs> what do we, what do you do with the TV, you guys? Put it in the comment blocks. Tell us what you're supposed to do with the TV because we really don't know. We don't have one of those in the house. Especially when you're off grid, not connecting to anything. That's right. So <laughs> anyway, now we got to get a generator because right now I've got it plugged into my 50 amp um, RV hookup out here at the house. But once we leave here, we're not gonna have that. So oh boy, what do you think, Rosa? The reality of this move really began to set in when we started selling off items from the farm and particularly the animals, the livestock. You know, living out here on a self-sufficient farm, the livestock are really our livelihood. They provide our milk, our eggs, our power with the horses. And when we started realizing that a lot of that had to go before we could make this move, that was, that was a big deal. <laughs> It was helpful too though because uh, you know there's a lot of chores, there's a lot of maintenance on fences, there's a lot of things um, that you do every day and you don't even think about it. But it takes up a lot of time and a lot of effort and materials and resources and so actually downsizing like that has literally made our chore time almost negligible. And you know it's easy to say, in fact we even considered, let's just keep the animals. We can make this work because we get attached to these. Uh, but what we realize too is there's a balance between what we keep and what's fair to the animal themselves. You know, where we're going, there's no fences, there's no stalls, there's even limited shelter areas, and even that has to be repaired and, and rebuilt before we can use it to make it safe. So, right. in a sense, putting some of these animals into a very confined space after the freedom they're used to would not have been fair to them. So we decided after a lot of prayer and discussion, the best thing for their sake was to help find them new and good homes where they can continue to live the, the freedom they're used to and we would just start over with a new line when we're ready. We will build up our population of livestock when they have room to live like God intended them to live. 
mm -hmm. out, not in confined areas, but out in God's creation. All right, well, we never thought we could do it, but I've got the wagon up front and the carriage in the back. It's uh, 24 foot on the floor, and the wagon is 14 feet, and the carriage is 13 and a half feet. So you can figure that doesn't fit. But it's like a Chinese puzzle. I've got the wheels interlaced and stuff, and it, it fits by half an inch. So we're taking these over to friend's house. We're going to store it while we move everybody down to Marion. So it's just part of the move, and it's hot. Ah. So that's what remains of our equipment shed that we built and finished last year. Uh, you can see most of the big equipment is gone. Uh, the wagon is prepped to take over to a friend's house to store. The um, sickle bar mower is gone. The manure spreader is gone. The hay rake is gone. Uh, most of our animal shelters that were stored over there are gone. So all that's been sold off. And we're down to just the bare essentials that we're taking with us. Things are definitely changing around here. Well, that is a trailer with lightning and flash on board. I can't believe I just lost my team. Bye, girls. So the goat fields are kind of quiet now. Just the three does that are left, and we're taking two babies to start the next generation. But that'll keep us supplied in just enough milk for our family, so that should be good. We've got some pretty good producing goats that we've bred over the years. So it was a, a tough choice to decide who to sell and who to keep because we've worked hard for our line of goats here and they're all really nice. But this is the, the batch that made the final cut and a couple of their babies that'll go with us. So that will get the new farm started. So Iris here is the only one left. Uh, we actually rehomed Aspen. Iris is getting kind of old, so even though changing properties is going to be hard on her, we figured it would be a lot harder to change owners as well. So we decided to let her stay with us, but our other one, Aspen, although we loved him to death, he was a dog that needed a lot of space to roam and run and pastures to guard, and we just aren't going to have that at the new property, so it wouldn't have been fair to him. So we found a great home for him to go to where he'll keep guarding. So Grace is the last horse left on the farm. We actually decided to hang on to her for several reasons. First of all, she is still in that healing phase we've discussed in other videos, uh, kind of rehabbing her feet. So I didn't feel comfortable passing her on to a new home where she might not get the care she needs. And she is, as a result of those feet, she's much more content to stand around in a stall like she's doing now than the other horses would have been. Um, and then finally, once we sold off the other horses, she was spending all her time just standing at the gate looking for company. So what we did was bring her up and put her behind the barn where she just kind of hangs out, but at least she's got the chickens and she's got Iris and she can see the goats and see the kids playing around the field and the barn. So at least she can stay entertained that way. So it seems to be working out. Um, that will also give us a little horsepower initially when we need something to move the scrap around or move things around the new place. Hopefully she will be content just to kind of hang out and be the solo horse and get pampered a bit. Oh, there's a handful of the chickens. They're still kind of free ranging and doing their thing during the day. But when we tried to decide whether to buy eggs for a while, uh, the kids all decided they wanted our fresh eggs so we're gonna keep about 10 or 12 chickens there's still a few extras running around here but we'll keep a handful of chickens to keep us supplied initially and then we'll start fresh later but these guys are still hopefully help with bug control and serve a few advantages for us and I think they'll enjoy the large number of bugs that will be on the new property since it's rather untouched and totally wild but other than that it's just a bunch of cleanup that we have to do out here as a general rule we live fairly simply anyway or so we thought but one thing we've really learned already through this process is just how much stuff we can accumulate here in our nation 
So as simple as we are, one of the biggest challenges so far in the last couple of weeks has been the purge. We've been having to determine essentially what to get rid of completely, uh, what to keep for long-term storage, because we don't know when our new house is going to be built. So this is somewhat of an indefinite process of living in the RV. And then we've had to have some stuff where we call it the keep pile. It's stuff we're still packing up, but we want access to it, maybe by the school season if things are running slow. Then we have the very small pile of items that are being actually packed into the RV itself. And that's going to be tight. That's definitely <laughs> our biggest challenge. <laughs> Trying to get everything set up and figure out what to pack, what to leave in the house to stage it for sale, I guess you could say. And we're moving along, I think. We got the upstairs bathroom all cleaned up and it's ready to go. The kids are pretty much forbidden in this room anymore. Now let's go see uh, the girls room, which is the second room we've finished. And here's what used to be the boys room. We've got it pretty much cleared out. And I just gotta put some finishing touches in here and Sean's been working in the loft today trying to get it all packed up. This was our school room, so he's kind of disassembling it. We've got this cool built-in desk. I'm gonna miss that. We actually built that from wood from the property that he had milled. And uh, I don't know, as well as the shelves, but always a fun little story there. What we're working on is staging the house and getting ready to get to sell. And of course, to do that while you're still living in it, we're just basically clearing out one room at a time. And all of it is kind of finding its way into my living room where I'm working on doing laundry, sorting, organizing, um, finding matching components that can be packed together. So sort of doing the whole move slash spring cleaning that's way overdue. You, you left a girl in the chair. Well, over there. I'll just throw in the biggest box left later. Okay, we don't have a box big <laughs> enough for that over there. Can I show my brickwork over here? Yeah. Yeah, so our hearth was all torn up and cracked up. And so I am not a mason, but these bricks were very poorly set, but it actually looks very rugged. So I tried to match the rugged look, so. I don't know if you can tell which ones. I had to do about eight different bricks over here and tear the whole thing out and put it back together, so. Thanks to the military, we have always purged every few years until we moved to this house. So Sean and I never really had the opportunity to collect too much stuff, but uh, this was our standard bedroom closet. Nothing particularly fancy about it, but it was full of clothes. So we have consolidated all our clothes into, oh, hello. She's always somewhere. Uh, into bins, kind of like this. So we have a few bins and boxes with all of our clothes that are going into long-term storage. And one of the scary parts is that we are consolidating down temporarily to... So here in the camper, Sean and I each have a tiny wardrobe. Oh, it's about 18 inches wide. So we're pretty much consolidating down to just a couple of dress outfits that hang, packing everything else in the back and in bins. And he's got his on that side. And then we each have about half of that space up there. So definitely gonna be a different life. Uh, living very minimalistic here. We're also getting the kids all packed up, so figured out the bed situations. They've already moved out into the camper now. So um, we have one kid that sleeps on the large, basically what should be the dining room table area because there's just not quite enough beds back here. And then here in the bunkhouse, we've got it all set up such that little Kyla has her place on the floor. And we've got three kids on bunks in here. So it's been a good trial run for about a week now, testing out. They've all got clothes 
packed into the cabinet here. So they're having to learn to share and live in a tiny space. I think these shelves are probably about two feet wide. So there's two children on each shelf with a little space on top for a den of socks and they just all take out of the sock bin. So that's the plan for right now. And we're figuring it out as we go, but hopefully by the time we actually head south, we'll have kind of come up with a, a bit of a game plan here. Looks like we're finally getting this deck painted. We rebuilt the deck last year and had to let the wood season through the winter and spring and now it's finally dry enough. We're having to catch it between rains, but it's looking good. We'll get the floor painted hopefully later today and that'll be another big project off the list. So we're about nine days from closing on the property and then we're gonna start making the transition down there. So we've been a little rushed here, uh, especially trying to get the house on the market and getting things cleaned up and packed away, but we always make sure that God and family come first. So we do take time out for the family and we continue to have fun little breaks <laughs> now and again. And, uh, and we, uh, we're gonna continue to do that through the entire process. We want the memories to be good ones. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Four. You ready to watch it? Okay. Okay. Catch it if it comes to me. Five, four, three, two, one. See? No idea where it is. Oh, good. Oh, here it comes. Here, I don't. I don't know if I got it on film, but it's coming right at me. Catch it! Catch it, guys. Let's go. I got it. I got catch it. it! Catch it! Catch it! Catch it! Catch it! Nice. Go under. Whoa. Jump. Uh -huh. Going from the farm here in the woods, beautiful area, lots of land, pasture to little RV in the woods on a bluff. It's going to be adventurous. But keep following us. Keep those comments coming. I'd really like to hear comments on any of you who have lived off grid, any of you boondockers out there that uh, live in RVs that uh, are not hooked up to utilities. Especially with kids involved. Absolutely. We learn a lot from your comments and we love them coming. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'll see you next time.